you for the introduction. And I want to get right into it. I know you all came here, and so I want to be really real and really wrong. Because it's really easy when we hear about the highlight reel. A lot of people have celebrated the success that I've made in my life. But I'll never forget, and I want to tell you guys a story, this moment for me, where everyone thought I was on top of the world. And I had just sold this company that I put my heart and soul into, that Melissa just talked about. And I remember being on the corner of Norfolk and Sussex, an inner city near where I grew up. And this was an inner, in an inner city where I really wanted to serve the local community, the people that were underserved and teach them entrepreneurship, emotional intelligence, financial literacy. And the whole, all these people were celebrating my success, asking me to speak all over the world, and I'm getting awards, and all these things. I'll never forget being on the corner of Norfolk and Sussex, falling down to my knees and just feeling like I had a hole in my chest. Because even though I had all these things that I worked so hard for to prove myself that I could, and all of a sudden I start getting these things and starting achieving this level of success in my life, I still didn't truly feel worthy of all of it. Does anybody relate to something like that? Does anybody feel that? Like the whole world looks at you like, man, you got this and you got that, and, they, and they're celebrating you know, all this potential, but then like deep down you're like, yeah, I still feel insecure. I still feel like I'm not good enough. No matter what, I still feel like an imposter. And that was me. I remember just being on the corner of Norfolk and Sussex and bar wire and the streets are dirty and I wanna help this inner city so bad and I wanna help the world so bad, but deep down I just feel so broken. And it was just in this moment that I didn't know where to turn to. Because even though the world saw, saw this success, no one knew what was truly going on on the inside. And while I was even feeling that way, and I've never really shared this, but I feel like this is a really beautiful, intimate event. My younger sister, how many of you are a, a sister or a brother in the room or have a younger sister or a younger brother? So my younger sister, Monica, came to me during that time. She asked to take a walk with me and she shared with me that she was contemplating committing suicide. And as a big brother, no matter how hard I tried to express to my sister how much I loved her, how much our family loved her, how much her, her life mattered, it didn't matter. She just felt like she didn't belong. And it crushed me. So here I am, all this success happening. I'm not feeling worthy. My younger sister, who means the world to me, is telling me she wants to take her life and I can't, and as much as I want to help all these people, my sister, I can't help. At that exact same time of a relationship that I was in for five years, fell apart. And no one knew all of this was happening. And so I didn't know where to turn. And I went home to see my parents. And my father, who was extremely tough on me growing up, my father's kind of like a mobster type. He's like a Tony Soprano. Anyone know the Sopranos? <laughs> all right, well, my father's like Tony Soprano. And he was really, without going into too much of that, he was really tough on me. It kind of caused me to want to prove myself to my dad my whole life and never get the recognition. How many men in here feel, feel that? My father was in there and no one knew everything I was going through. Remember, I'm like getting awards, I just sold the company 50 million, right? I'm thinking my family's kind of me and my father takes me and he pushes me into a bathroom. And with a serious face, he walks up to me and he hands me an envelope. He says, open it. I, I take the envelope and I pull out this, this letter. And he looks at me and he says, now read it to me. And this letter says, son, a father and a son's bond is unbreakable. And I've seen you your whole life, one thing after another, put your mind to things and try to achieve things in life and make it all happen. But I can tell that you're unhappy. And it's time in this chapter of your life to actually start thinking about what makes you happy. Just start thinking about family. And in that letter, he said he was proud of me. Something happened is I was looking for my whole life. And there was a, there was a shift that happened. I remember my hands shaking, my palms sweaty as I'm reading this letter. I can't even believe my dad wrote me this letter. I just couldn't hold it. I felt like my father saw right through me. Like he just knew, like I was just one thing after another going with all these things, but he knew deep down inside that I was, I wasn't myself that I wasn't truly happy, that I was unfulfilled. And so I, tears started going down my eyes and I felt so seen in that moment. And I recognized all these shadows that I had of insecurity and trying 
trying to prove myself to my dad or trying to prove myself to the world, not being good enough, like all of it. It's like, for what? It's, he's right. It's time to focus on family. It's time to focus on what makes me happy. What do I really want to bring to the world? It's time to start focusing on the gift that I have, this opportunity that I have of life. So I started really tapping in and praying. And I had a moment with God. I was like, Gerard, you were built for something more. You're built for greatness. It's time for you to own your story. See, that publication that I sold, we did 80 to 100 articles every single day. 80 million millennials read our publication every single month. I told stories about everything and everyone while I hid in the shadows. And God was like, it's time for you to own your story. It's time for you to do the media publication. And so I share that with you all because each and every single one of you in this room has a story worth telling. Your story matters. Your story can make a difference. Your story heals. Not only will it heal you, it will heal others. Because storytelling is a modality, just like breath work or meditation or prayer. We can either let our stories own us or we can take ownership of our stories. And the moment that we take ownership of our stories, we go from victim to victor. And who here is a victor in this room? Yeah. Who's ready to move out of that victim mindset, that scarcity mindset, the insecurities? Because if you're in this room, I know you've magnetized this opportunity to connect with others that are on this path, that recognize that your story matters, that is ready to take ownership of your story, to live your story, to write your story be the author of your story. And so I share this with you all as like a piece of my story that has made a real difference in my life where I've been able to move from, and there's been many different chapters of struggle and shadows that have shown up to a shift that has happened in my life and to then stepping into service. And so that is the framework that I want to share with y'all. And so I wanted to open up with a little bit of a story for you all. I was always thinking, I love, I love engagements like this because it always gets me out of my comfort zone. Shout out to Eric. Yo, let's give him a round of applause. That was amazing. And he's, he's right. Like, there's, there's, this, oh, there's just like a nervousness that happens no matter what. And um, it's, it's a growth edge. And I'm excited to see who's ready to tap a little more into that growth edge in this talk. I think Eric primed y'all. I recognize that there's so many different parts of, of our stories that we get to tell. And I wanted to share one with you that I had never shared. So that story about my father and the letter, you guys are the first I ever really shared that. I've never shared that like this, in a space like this on stage. And there's so many stories you have that I'm excited for you to alchemize. And I'm excited for you to, to, to leverage, to make a difference, and to create an impact in the world. And I went through, as I told that story, I went through a framework, and I want to share that framework with y'all. So take out your pads and pen. Before I go into this framework, I want to share one more thing. But my father's letter inspired me so much that what it did for me was not only help me to take ownership of my story, but it was through that shift that my father created for me that I decided to go from boy to man, from son to father. And I started focusing on who's the, who, what kind of man am I gonna to decide to be in this world? And it's because of that letter that I've been able to work on becoming a father. And my daughter is turning two this upcoming week. So shout out to my daughter, Skyla, who is my everything, my pride and joy. And, um, and it's because of that shift that it helped me to start thinking about, okay, yeah, I can go and achieve all these things the next 100 million, the next this, that, but what really matters? And for me, more than anything, is family. Such a blessing to have my daughter. All right, who's ready for this framework? Y'all ready to step into more of a storyteller? All right, let's go. All right, so the first part of the framework is going to be, can anyone guess it? It's been asked, they all do. It's true, what? Family. Family, oh, it's good, yeah, I love that, but great, great answer. So the first part of, this is called the leader's story framework, okay? There's gonna be different parts to this. So the first is gonna be the framework. Then we're gonna talk about that. Then I'm gonna go over a script so you can learn how to leverage this framework and a script. And then I'm gonna reveal the system, which is gonna perfectly position you for the amazing Daniel G who's coming up after that to help you to learn conversion so you can use your story for purpose and for profit. 
Who's ready for that? Who's ready to use your story for purpose and profit? Because you deserve that. All right, so the first, yes, struggle. So what do I mean by struggle? The first part of you owning your story. Talk to me about struggle. What is the struggle? And what does that mean to you? A challenge. Anyone else? An opportunity, I love that. Dope. Vulnerability? Ah, oh, yes. That's a code right there. This is, the, this is where the vulnerability li lives, y'all. And the vulnerability is what creates the connection. And so I want you all to think about and write down this question. Where, what is a moment in my life where I've had struggle, hardship, an obstacle, pain, vulnerability? Pick one of those moments in your life that was a part of your journey that was a struggle. The next part of the framework is shadow. So through these struggles, first of all, what we recognize, right, is like through the struggle, what we know is like our pain is our purpose. Our mess is our message, is our message, right? And, but through it, let, let's like make sure that we get the juice. When something happens to us, when we know it's for us, it's like, let's get the juice. When some shit goes down in my life, I'm like, I want the juice. Like, what is this revealing to me? You know, like, <laughs> on the way here, I left my phone in the taxi. The last time I came to Tulum, Phone in the taxi and I didn't get it back and he was like, oh my god. I left the phone in the taxi again. I'm like, what is this revealing to me? Oh man, I need to breathe, be present, where's my mind? All these things. Luckily, I did this driver really well. He gave me back my phone. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, yo, there's shadows, and it's like really looking at these shadows, understanding your shadows, because there's power in that. And so in this part of your story of the struggle, what shadows have been revealed? So that's the next question I want you to think about. What shadows were revealed in the struggle? Was it unworthiness like me, inadequacy? Was it insecurity? Was it not being good enough? Was it the fear of failure? Was it FOPO, fear of other people's opinions? FOPO, write that now. We all got a little bit of that. But what are these shadows that were revealed? And then the next part, can anyone guess it? What the next part of the framework is? In the story, the shift I had talked about, right? There was a shift that happened. Similar to Joseph Campbell and his hero's journey. That's where this, I know my man here loves Joseph. This was inspired for me. Joseph inspired me big time. And so there are these shifts, this moment, this breakthrough. We've all had many, many moments like this. So in this particular story that you're sharing, what's the shift? Was it a ceremony? Was it a moment with God? Was it spiritual? Was it a mentor that you met? Where you were like, I finally had the courage to make that investment in myself? Was it a family member, like for me, my father, in this letter? Was it death? Like what Eric talks about, someone close to you dying. It was something that created this radical shift in you. And so what or who created this shift? And then the last part of the framework is service. And so, what does service mean to y'all? When you think about your story and leading to service, what does service mean to you? How do you use your gifts to serve the greater mankind? Yes, yes, give a round of applause, y'all. That's what I'm talking about. When we use our gifts, right, to serve humanity. Like, that's what we're all here, to make the world a better place, right? And so, yes, anyone else? Like, what does service mean to you? Contribution, let's go! We out here, we contributing to making this world a better place. Yes, anyone else, one more. To empower people to step into their life. To empower people to step into their own life. That's what I'm talking about, give a round of applause, y'all. Yes, empowering others to step into their light. That's who we are. We are the light. And, and it's all about bringing that light to others. And so, how did this leader's story that you are sharing, how did it go from a struggle that happened to you to then turning into the biggest blessing, like Melissa's story, where she's now leading up here, honoring her daughter's birthday, writing a book. That book is gonna impact millions of people's lives. 
that have suffered from that. I was crying back there thinking about that, having a two-year-old little girl. Like the strength of you, Melissa, to be up here and honoring Layden. Let's give a round of applause to Layden. <laughs> Happy birthday, Layden. We love you, Layden. So that's it, right? That story bleeds to service. How are you gonna alchemize that pain and turn it into power, turn it into purpose, turn it into profit? Because you are worthy of that to do more great work in the world. And so this is the framework. Now I wanna go into the script. Well, actually, before we do, I want to take a moment to drop us all in for a moment. You guys with me if we could do a little drop in? Because I think this is a really powerful framework for us all to just allow this to integrate for a second here. And really, I want everyone to take a moment and think about one of your leader's stories. What is a moment in the struggle that has happened in your life? What shadows were revealed to you in that struggle? What happened? Who came into your life or what event took place that created a breakthrough for you? And how did that lead to more purpose in your life? How did that lead to more contribution and more service? And so we're gonna go ahead and do a visualization. Is there anyone that is not comfortable right now dropping in, raise your hands, is everyone okay? Dropping in to a little meditation and visualization? Yeah, okay, great. How, is this, is this valuable for you guys so far? Is this supporting you all? All right, dope, dope. All right, so here we go. So I wanna invite us all to just take a, a few deep breaths together. So, all right, so let's just go ahead and close our, our eyes gently for a moment here. Just allow your hands to fall on your lap. And allow your hands to just be open. Open to receive. I want you all to just with me, let's just all take a really nice deep breath. In through our nose, out through our mouth. Amazing. Amazing. Let's go ahead and do another one. In through the nose. Exhaling through the mouth. Okay, one more, and I want this to be the biggest breath you've taken all day. Person that came into your life that believed in you, 
maybe it was you, maybe it was God, maybe it was a parent, maybe it was a mentor, but someone that came in and reminded you of the truth. Who was that person? Where were you? What was that event that created that shift in you that said, no, I'm not going to give up. I know I'm worthy of more. I know that I have a purpose. And remember that feeling that brought you here right now in this room. Ready to live that purpose. Ready to alchemize what you have gone through and make a meaningful impact in the world. Just now, just putting your hand over your heart. Just taking a moment to be proud of yourself. Taking a moment to give gratitude for that shift to that person that got you here. Just a moment of silence. Recognizing that you're safe. You're loved. Now when you're ready, you can uh, come back to the space. Gently open up your eyes. Ah, thank you, y'all. Let's go. You just tapped into your leader story, y'all. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. All right. So I want you to turn to the person next to you. The one is the person to the right. I'm gonna try to do this right. Is partner A, and the person to your left is partner B. Um, so maybe you need someone here. Can you step in? For you all, that feel amazing. Oh, it's gonna take a second, right? Okay. All right, let's take a nice deep breath in. Can you load this music? Uh, it's me. Got it. Here we go. Woo. I was like, quick shift, quick. Okay, let's all just take a nice deep breath in together. <sighs> Release. Do two more. Breath in. Release. Yourself to ground you. More. <sighs> Release. Amazing. Awesome. Okay. Now, I'm going to give you guys a couple minutes if you feel called to share to the person next to you what came up for you. What was the story that showed up? What was the shift? The struggle? Share a little bit about that. With the person. You don't have to give them a name. Whatever you feel comfortable in sharing, share. Know that this is a safe space. And um, I'm going to give you guys uh, two minutes. And then we're going to change and switch. Sound good? Okay, cool. All right, so partner A, turn to partner B, and begin. <laughs> Let's go. All right, so thank you all for playing with me. How was that for y'all? How did that feel? A couple, few um, words, curious. What was that like for you? Um, confronting. Mm, wow. Wow. I feel that. Thank you for sharing. Okay, someone else. Okay. Okay. Let's get someone else too. It's great. How did that feel for you? It was an opportunity to connect the dots of my life. Wow, that's amazing. Can we give a round of applause for these three? Confronting the power and connecting the dots. Write your story, and I cannot wait because I know that your story is so powerful that you get to be up here one day and create an impact. And so I love y'all. Thank you.